Well, nicely done. You've made it to the last video. And by the way, don't be put off by the busyness of this screen. Uh, you know all the stuff here, income statement, statement of cash flows. There's the balance sheet. Uh, what I'm going to do now is do a very fast rattle through all three of these and uh, just, to, just to cover off all the work that you already know. All right, you ready? Let's... Uh, Let's get going. Oh, one thing, by the way, and that is that you'll see negative numbers don't have a dash in front of them. They're represented uh, with brackets around them. Okay, ready? Go. This is for January for Acme Web Design. The income statement starts off with sales of $5,000 and a corresponding cost of goods sold of $1,000. We know to subtract the one from the five to get to $4,000. Then we have a bunch of expenses, general and administrative $6,000. That's your rent, uh, telecommunications costs, administrative costs, that type of thing. Uh, no research and development cost. We have sales and marketing. There was a salary in there and a small campaign. Add all those up to get to $9,000 and then subtract uh, 4,000 Subtract 9000 from 4000 to get to minus 5000 That's our fancily named subtotal, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, or called EBITDA. We have no interest. Uh, we didn't pay anything to the bank, and so therefore our net income is $5,000 loss, which means we didn't make any money here. That $5,000 goes over to the top of the statement of cash flows. And then um, the uh, $5,000 worth of the sales wasn't paid to us. Half of it uh, instead went to accounts receivable. And when that happens, uh, it decreases the cash we have available. There, That's why a negative number. But you can also see that it increases the accounts receivable showing on the balance sheet. But then we didn't pay some of the uh, costs uh, this month. And so that increased our accounts payable and also increased the amount of cash that we have on hand. There's the accounts payable uh, down here. So total um, cash from operations is a minus 6,500. We didn't buy any equipment. We didn't take out a loan. But the founder did put in $25,000 uh, against common stock. Therefore, the total cash... Uh, proceeds coming into the company this month is 18500 There's the total of this and this and this. Uh, cash at the start of the period was zero. Therefore, cash at the end of the period was eighteen five. And this starts off our balance sheet right here. We know what the accounts receivable is. Therefore, total current assets is 21000 No equipment. Um, there's the accounts payable. Total uh, current liabilities of 1000 No long-term liabilities. Total overall liabilities of 1000 There's the uh, common stock. 25000 sliding in here, and retained earnings, as you know, is the total of all of the uh, profits and losses since the company began. And if you look down, you see a total of liabilities and equity of 21000 which balances with the total assets, our balance sheet balances. Whew, okay, we're almost there. i got to show you one more thing. Okay, so what I've done here is added in another month. We're going to go through the month of February, and we're going to do it very quickly. All right, sales of 7000 is up from the previous month. Corresponding 20% cost of goods sold leaves a gross profit of 5600 uh, expenses hasn't changed, still $9,000 worth of expenses. $5,600 of gross profit minus the $9,000 in expenses equals the EBITDA of minus $3,400. So we're still losing money, but not as bad, which is exactly what you want to see in a new company. We did pay the bank $100 worth of interest, and I'll show you why in just a minute. And uh, 3400 minus $3,400 minus 100 is equal to minus $3,500, uh, the loss for the month. And that starts off our statement of cash flows at the top. Okay, here's a little trickiness. The $2,500 in accounts receivable last month got paid to us this month, but we also then took half of this sales, then went back into accounts receivable. The difference between the $2,500 from last month and the $3,500 from this month is $1,000. So accounts receivable went up by $1,000, as you can see here. Uh, which just reduces our cash. The accounts payable, we paid our bills from last month, but then didn't pay some of our bills from this month. So accounts payable is still at $1,000 unchanged. Uh, a net cash from operations, minus 4500 We then bought some equipment. We paid $12,000 for it. We took out a, a loan from the bank for 10000 of that, 
Common stock remains unchanged. Therefore, the total of the cash flows from operations and investing and financing is equal to minus $6,500. Um, so the, in the month, $6,500 went out of the company. But we started off, we ended up last month with eighteen five dollars cash. That starts off this month, and therefore we still have $12,000 in the bank, as you can see here, starting off, uh, but ending off this month. There's our total current assets. Long term, there's the $12,000 equipment right here. And uh, so the total assets is $27,500. Um, the equipment loan of $10,000 shows up right here in our balance sheet. That's a liability, something that we have to pay back. And so our total liabilities is $1,000 plus 10 is equal to 11. Common stock remains unchanged. Retained earnings, as you'll recall, is the total of all of the uh, profits and losses since the company began, which is indeed 8500 And you can see that at the bottom, the total of liabilities and owner's equity is 27500 and so our balance sheet balances. Perfect. Well, listen, you've been a great student, and I've really uh, appreciated that you uh, spent this time with me. Uh, financial statements are an excellent tool to guide you to success. So the best thing you can do is to hire a bookkeeper uh, to do your financials uh, every single month and then meet with your accountant regularly, uh, monthly or uh, no less frequently than every three months. And um, uh, I wish you all the very best.